Got a major, uh, the ruling that everybody was, um, everybody was waiting for, uh, the uh, Chauvin, uh, the policeman who, um, who uh, killed, um, who called George Floyd, uh, you know, was, was today found guilty of second degree murder, third degree murder, and I think, what was it, second degree manslaughter, although it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of weird that, you know, I think second degree murder covered it all. Uh, it's kind of weird that they, you have to kind of, I think they charged him with all of them. Uh, just in case he didn't get the guilty, they didn't get the guilty verdict on second degree murder, they hoped to get the guilty verdict on one of the others. Uh, so they charged him on all of them with the hope that one of them would stick. Uh, and, and of course, if, if he's guilty of, of uh, the second degree murder, then uh, all the others follow because, uh, because second degree murder, in a sense, includes the standards for all the, uh, for all the previous ones as well. So uh, it's not surprising that once they, once they got a guilty verdict on the first, that they would get a guilty verdict on all of them. Um, let's see, what was I looking for? Yeah, I was looking for kind of the, I was interested in the differences between uh, first degree murder, second degree murder, and so on. So here's, here's something I found in one of these uh, legal, um, it's not a $3,000 super chat match. My goal is to raise $3,000. And uh, the first $1,000 would be matched by John. So uh, nobody's matched the other $2,000. If somebody wants to jump in and agree to match the whole $3,000 or the extra $2,000 above John's $1,000, then we'll have a $3,000 match. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, uh, is chutzpah an anti-concept? No, chutzpah is an actual, uh, actual concept, and Bernie Madoff did not have chutzpah. He just had, he was just an idiot. Um, so I thought, you know, explaining a little bit about the differences between these would be helpful. So first degree murder, I think we all know, it usually falls into one of the following two categories. First degree murder is either premeditated intentional killing of somebody. But intentional killing that was, uh, that was kind of in advance and that was, it was thought through. So if you just get angry, if, you, if, you, if, if it's an act of passion in the moment, that does not count as a first degree murder usually. It has to be premeditated and intentional. And, uh, or felony murder. Felony murder is you murder somebody in the act of committing a felony. So let's say you're robbing a store and, um, and the gun accidentally goes off and you kill the clerk. Or you get really, you, you get into a fight with the clerk and you kill him. Um, that's first degree murder because you're already committing a felon, a felony. And, uh, and the murder happened in the context of that felony. So that all counts as first degree murder. I think it's clear that in this case there was no grounds uh, to charge uh, uh, Chauvin, the policeman, with a first degree murder. What is second degree murder? Second degree murder is generally either an unplanned, intentional killing. That is, you're reacting in the heat of the moment when angry. You get all passionate, excited, you're, you're, you're pissed off, you really, and you can't control yourself and you pull the trigger. That would be uh, second degree murder. Or a death caused by a reckless disregard for human life. So death caused through your action. Um, it wasn't premeditated. It wasn't necessarily in the heat of passion, you would say. But it was reckless. It was, it was there's plenty of reason, um, there's, there's plenty of, of, of reason to believe that you could have stopped yourself from doing what you did and you didn't. So you were just a reckless disregard for for human life. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that is probably what, uh, what um, Chauvin was convicted under. Uh, it, it wasn't that he was angry and, he, you know, he uh, intentionally killed, the, killed him. But it, I think it was under the idea that it was as a reckless disregard for human life. That he should have known that what he was doing was killing uh, George Floyd, it wasn't necessary for his own self-defense. He was trying to subdue, but uh, it got to the point where it was recklessly disregarding. Uh, George Floyd himself said he couldn't breathe. Uh, bystanders said, "Take you know, you're killing him. He can't breathe." 
He paid no attention. He kept a foot on the guy's neck for nine minutes. And that is considered, that would be considered uh, in, in a context, reckless disregard for human life because he should have known that what he was doing was killing him and there was no reason to kill him. That is, it wasn't an, it wasn't an issue of self-defense to kill him. Um, so the difference between first and second degree murder is certainly intentionality um, and uh, the mindset, the mindset of the killer. Right? Was it was it intentional, or was it it was it planned? Was it unplanned? Was it intentional? Was it just reckless? What actually brought about the actual the actual killing? Third degree murder or manslaughter um, is an unplanned, unintentional killing, so an accident basically that is not part of another felony. And, and here I think. This is why they convicted him of, um, this is uh, why they convicted him of manslaughter as well, because it kind of qualifies um, as uh, unintentional. He didn't intend to kill him, uh, but, um, uh, but uh, in, this, in this, it says it doesn't rise to the level of reckless disregard for human life, but you still, you know, it's still kind of an accident. It's something you didn't, you weren't reckless, you didn't intend, right? Um, so uh, it says here, a person committing third degree murder still shows ill will towards someone else by harming them, but doesn't intend to kill them, but does kind of accidentally kill them. Um, third degree murder charges actually only exist in three states, Pennsylvania, Florida, Minnesota. I think in this case, it wasn't... Um, Third degree murder, it was a second degree manslaughter, right? So I think manslaughter in Minnesota kind of overlaps with third degree murder in Pennsylvania, Florida, and Minnesota. So those are kind of the, 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 the standards uh, of uh, prosecution. This is what uh, they're going after uh, Chauvin for. And what the court, what the uh, jury uh, convicted him of is second degree murder, that is, he uh, acted in reckless disregard of human life. Um, it, it convicted him of, uh, and of, it convicted him of manslaughter, which is uh, basically, uh, you know, he, he killed somebody. I think, again, it's superfluous once you convict of second degree murder for all the rest. They, they charge you with all the rest in order to cover their asses so that if one, if the jury, uh, doesn't convict you of the one, they might convict you of the other. Um, all right. Let's see. So in, in this case, you know, we all saw the video. Um, we saw some testimony. Uh, I didn't follow the trial that closely. It, it didn't seem, the trial itself... Um, didn't seem really that interesting. I think the, the, the evidence was, uh, you know, some of the arguments that we heard before the trial about why um, uh, George Floyd died seemed to be, have been refuted by the prosecution. Uh, it didn't seem like he died because of, uh, because of drugs or from other things. It seems like Chauvin really did kill him. Uh, and uh, there was some conflicting evidence in terms of the police in terms of whether he followed procedure or didn't follow procedure, but Minnesota police, uh, different uh, from different, get different ranks of the police, all testified that this uh, that he had, uh, in a sense, recklessly disregarded human life, that he was not in the right um, in um, in doing what he did, and uh, he should bear the consequences of uh, of his actions. Uh, you know, I, there was nothing in the trial that would lead, I think, anybody strongly to think that a jury would, um, would find him uh, innocent. There was some debate about whether it would be second-degree murder or third-degree murder under Minnesota law. Uh, but, you know, uh, 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 reckless disregard for human life is pretty broad, and you can see that nine minutes uh, is a long time, uh, being handcuffed on the ground, why does a knee have to be on your neck? 
seemed pretty reasonable that that was reckless disregard of human life, particularly given all the shouting and all the people arguing that the guy was, you were going to kill him, and there was uh, no reason. So overall, I, I really don't have any problem with the verdict. It seems like a reasonable verdict to me. I, again, I didn't follow the trial minute by minute. If I was on the jury, maybe I'd, I'd think differently, but from everything I could tell, um, the, the, this was a pretty, this was not that difficult of a case. I think what's much more interesting about this trial is everything that's going on around it, everything that happened around it. The complete politicization, is that a word? Politicization? Politicization. Whoops. Uh, politicization of our, uh, of our legal system. Of our legal system. The fact, the, the disgraceful fact, that before the verdict came out, uh, politicians, Democratic politicians, particularly uh, one, um, her name slits my mind right now, uh, I know she's from California, politicizing, the politicization, is that a word? Politicization? Hold on one second. I, I had some notes on my laptop that I forgot to transfer to my, my computer that I use for this, so let me... Uh, let me just Maxime Waters, thank you. Uh, but let me just uh, let me just get this so I have it. Um, but yes, so Maxime Waters, uh, you know, comes out and says basically yesterday. I think it was yesterday. She says, or the day before yesterday, she says basically, if you don't convict, we're going to stay in the streets. We're going to demonstrate. We might riot, and we might do more. In other words, a representative of the United States government, of the, of, the, of, the, of the legislative branch of the U.S. government, threatens the judicial branch of the U.S. government. That if the verdict is not a verdict that she is happy with, she, a member of the legislature, will promote basically insurrection, the abandonment of the rule of law, the negation of a jury trial, the negation of the rule of law, and that there would be, she would actively promote rioting, the destruction of property, the destruction, and, and a complete negation uh, of, of, of any rule of law. This is, this is a member of the House of Representatives, somebody who's supposed to be a representative of the U.S. government, somebody who's supposed to be acting in the name of the law. Now, the judge in the case actually said that given that statement by uh, Maxime Waters, that the defense would probably have a good case to take this case, on appeal, to appeal this case, on the basis of the jury was tainted. Because Maxine Waters basically threatened the jury. It's truly unbelievable. She went out and threatened a jury Be just in case, and, and try to basically influence how they voted. It's, it's completely grounds for an appeal. I don't know if the appeal will work. I, I don't know the exact legality of these things, how it exactly works. But, but you know, I think it would be reasonable for an appeal to be filed on this basis. The jury, in a sense, has been threatened and tampered with it is absolutely absurd. And it doesn't even matter in terms of the jury itself and the children of the trial itself. The idea that, again, a representative of the House of Representatives would threaten riots if they didn't get their way. She, uh, and I think there was a, uh, a motion in the House to reprimand her. It, it failed on complete party line vote, which is pathetic. You know, Republicans are pathetic, but Democrats, God, are they pathetic. 
I mean, you think that some Democrats out there would uh, would agree that what she said would, should be uh, should constitute a reprimand? Unfortunately, no. Every single Democrat voted against reprimanding her for the censoring her for, for what she said. But it didn't end there. A little before uh, the verdict came out, I think earlier today, earlier today before the verdict could come, but everybody knew the verdict was going to come out now. Now, granted that by this point, the jury had been sequestered. So this, you could argue, is not an attempt to influence the jury because the jury didn't hear this, supposedly, if you believe they were really sequestered. Sequestered, they were, they were isolated in, 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 de in deciding the trial. I don't understand why the jury wasn't sequestered from the beginning, from the beginning, given the notoriety of the trial, given the political pressure, given the political implications, given everything that surrounded this trial, the jury should have been sequestered from day one. From day one. It was only sequestered during deliberations, that is, yesterday and today. So the jury heard what Maxine Waters said. They didn't hear what our great President Biden said today. This reminds me of the kind of criticism I used to lay at Trump, but this is just as bad, if not worse. Here's what Biden said this morning. I'm praying the verdict is the right verdict. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have you, Mr. President, followed the trial, evaluated all the evidence, heard all the testimony, and are you now making a claim of fact based on all the evidence that was available to the jurors that you know what you would vote in terms of a verdict? No, I'm sure none of that is true. You know what you think the verdict should be. You know what politically the verdict should be. But for president, the president of the United States, not to wait until a jury makes a decision, but to pray the verdict is the right one because that's the right one you think, ignoring, again, the rule of law, the idea that you are innocent until proven guilty, according to U.S. law, that Chauvin, like him or not, hate him or not, was innocent until the jury declared him guilty. It's just pathetic. Now, again, this is the kind of thing Trump did all the time, intervening in legal matters, intervening as president in things that the, that the executive branch should never intervene in. And, and, and look, this is, these are precedents. Every president is going to do more and more and more and more of this. Now, I'm not saying you cannot have a view as a private citizen. But then it's incumbent on you if you're going to make public statements. This is why I'm not making a big deal out of this. You, you, would, need, you would need to make a public statement. Thank you, Wes. That's very generous. You would need to, make a, you would need to listen to all the testimony. You remember Leonard Peikoff? I don't know how many of you remember this, but Leonard Peikoff after the O.J. Simpson trial, did a, 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 an amazing show, an amazing show, really on epistemology, showing how you know, reality, a rational epistemology, reason, facts, were all ignored in the O.J. Simpson trial, and that the, the verdict had nothing to do with the evidence. Now, I don't think that's what happened here, but that's clearly what happened in the O.J. Simpson trial, but Leonard didn't know to do that, literally listen to all the testimony for days and days and days, analyzed it, and came to a conclusion as if he was a jury member based on the facts. And it was a, one of the best shows he'd ever done. I mean, it was just a magnificent example of uh, integration and, um, and, and, and a use of objectivist epistemology to analyze a, a court case and to show the injustice and, and horror of, uh, of the way uh, the jury just ignored facts, evidence, reality. Again, no evidence that that has actually happened here. But the 
the idea that a president has an opinion, is praying for, has a side, his side versus other people's side, a side, in a court case in front of a jury, and expresses that publicly, is again despicable. There's a separation of powers. He is not a legal expert. He is not a criminal law expert. And I doubt that he listened to every one of those. What if the jury had decided that he was not guilty of second degree murder, which would have been, I think, not crazy. Right? Not crazy. The jury didn't ignore the Floyd autopsy report. They weighed the various experts' interpretation of the Floyd autopsy report, and they agreed with some and disagreed with others. It was not clear-cut in terms of the expert witnesses that were, were testifying that he had died. Uh, you know, it, it seemed like it was clear-cut for most of the expert witnesses, medical expert witnesses, that he died from the knee and didn't die for the drugs. Again, I'm not a medical expert, but that's what I think the prosecution spend most, a huge amount of time trying to prove that that's what exactly happened. Again, the political issue here is what interests me. It's that a president of the United States now intervenes in criminal law because it has political implications. And of course, the only reason it has political implications is because somehow the left has construed this trial as a trial about systemic racism, when it's not. This trial was about, whoa, George, thank you. Thank you. Um, excellent. Uh, this is, uh, that's amazing. So we're now over the $1,000. Uh, as, uh, as I said uh, earlier in the show, I'm, I've shifted the goalposts. I've shifted the goalposts. The goalposts have now moved to um, uh, shifted the goalpost now to uh, three thousand dollars. And George, with regard to your question, so I'm just going to read this quickly. It is five hundred dollars, so he's cutting the line, and that's fine. Uh, you you interviewed uh, Dr. James Tooley last year about his uh, entrepreneurial ventures in private education. I'm happy to say that his book finally published last week. Uh, I'm happy to be, credit, uh, to be credited in his acknowledgments. This is George uh, Tibbetts. Um, I would be happy to get your complimentary copy. I'd happy, I'd be love to get one. Can I entice you into doing a review of the book? Absolutely. I'd love to do a review of the book. I'd love to have Thule back on the show uh, to discuss the book. So let's get, let's get, uh, let's get uh, James back on the show. Um, what I really love, here is what I really love. Maybe you can pull this off for me. I'd really love the permission to go into the UK without 14-day quarantine, given that I've been vaccinated, and interview, uh, interview James Tooley at Buckingham University, where he teaches. That would be fantastic. So, uh, uh, so George, yes, uh, let's send me a copy, and let's do it. Brad, uh, thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, Brad is, uh, is John's son. John, uh, happy birthday. We, we made it to $1,000. And we're now shooting for three. So we're at, um, we're at what is it? Uh, well, Alejandra is, is a little bit, uh, she's ambitious now. So she's going for 5,000. But I'll, I'll be happy if we make this uh, the best, um, the second best uh, super chat we've ever had. And that would, that would be $3,000. But we're already at uh, basically 1,399. Uh, and, uh, and I think somebody still owes us a couple of hundred bucks. So... I think we're clearly at 1,500, so halfway to the $3,000 mark, uh, which is my mark, a little bit further away from Alejandrina's uh, goal of 5,000. All right, now what makes this such a political issue? It's that this trial has turned into a trial about systemic racism, when this trial has nothing to do with systemic racism. This trial is a trial of a policeman who, in my view, based on everything I've seen of the evidence, abused his power, showed disregard for human life. I mean, Judge Floyd is not some saint. 
But Chauvin did not have to do what he did to him. I don't want policemen like Chauvin on duty. I don't want policemen who might do that to me, to my kids, to my friends. I want better police. I want police well-trained. I've talked about police training over and over and over again, so I'm not going to do it again. Uh, but I want well-trained police. I want police that I can trust. Now, I know uh, the anarchists among you are, are rolling your eyes and like, police, we can trust, we can trust police. They, they, they work for the state. Well, I'm not an anarchist. And I think you can, with the right training and with the right laws, laws that limit the scope of what they do, I I exclude, for example, drugs. But this is not about racism. There's no evidence that Chauvin was a racist. It seems to be evidence that he was a bad policeman. Bad policeman. Indeed, we need fewer police. Because we need fewer laws. If you decriminalize or legalize drugs, you can have a lot less police out there. What we need is police who do their job diligently, who are amazingly trained and are amazingly physically fit, who can subdue a victim without killing them and take them to trial. And what we need to avoid, we need them to avoid, <laughs> is this kind of violence. And what we need them to avoid is, is not just, I mean, we got this week, last week, the, 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 the female policeman who, who, who pulled out her gun instead of a taser. The gun is on the right hip, the taser is on the left hip, and she got right and left wrong? I mean, God. It should be instinctual. It should be, uh, instinctual is the wrong word. It should be automatized. That's what training is for, to automatize so that when you're in an emergency, you don't have to think. You don't have to think. It's, it's, uh, it's truly... It's truly unbelievable. Um, now, we're not at 1,500 yet. I, I'm waiting for Daniel to, uh, to uh, pony up, and then we'll be, well, we'll be over 1,500. Now, now's not a bad time, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel still owes me 200, although I haven't gotten to its topic. So we will get to his topic, and then he will. Uh, he, will okay, he promised me $500 if, we, if I included unions in the topic today, which we will get to in a little bit. But this is not a trial about racism. This had nothing to do with racism. Yeah, but we're over a thousand, so you're good to go. This is a trial. This is a trial about a bad cop. And how bad we could argue, but a bad cop. I am a panderer. What's wrong with pandering? But my rage against politicians doesn't end with Maxime Waters and uh, George Floyd. The most comical statement, the most ridiculous statement, if you will, the most evil statement of all of them, was actually Nancy Pelosi's statement. And I don't know if you saw this. Uh, I assume this is a real video. It seems so ridiculous that... Um, that maybe it's a it's a it's it's one of these fake videos, you know, where they where they place Maxine Waters and, and give her words she didn't say, I don't know, but it looked real, the video looked real. Um this is what Maxine Waters said in the video, which is truly shocking. This is after the verdict came out. And, and this is this is the kind of evil of altruism, this is the kind of evil of 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 the politicization of of, of the police, of and, and the whole the whole approach to um, to what's going on in terms of in terms of race today in America. Um, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Chris. Um, <laughs> 
Somebody says, yeah, even on a topic like this, I managed to piss off left and right. And yes, I, I'm proud of my ability to piss everybody off. I try to be objective, which nobody believes in anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, JJ, 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 whatever, uh, uh, says, uh, who in their right mind would volunteer to be a policeman? Well, you don't volunteer, right? You, you actually get paid for this. Uh, to be a policeman in America today, uh, these days, a thankless and dangerous job. It's not a surprise that attracts those kind of people. Yes, and, and, and I think it's, it's dangerous because of our politicians, because they, they, they create awful laws. It's dangerous because of our politicians who do not provide funding and do not provide support for training properly or don't, and don't require training properly. Um, and it's dangerous because uh, even when you shoot somebody justifiably, and in many of these cases, the, the shootings was justifiable. I don't think in the case of Chauvin it was justifiable, but in many, the, 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 the killing. Uh, many times it is justifiable. And yet they're still forced to resign. They still have to go to court. They, you know, and, and, and in some cases they should go to court because the court should decide whether it was justifiable or not. But the presumption is that they are guilty. The presumption is that they are racist. The presumption is that they are wrong. Even this woman who killed, who killed this guy, she shouldn't kill him. He shouldn't resist the arrest. You know, he's, he's a villain, the guy who got shot. But shows she for making a, such a ridiculous mistake between a gun and a taser. But she's a victim of a system that doesn't train her to have that automatized. And, and why would you want to be in a profession where you don't get the appropriate training, and then if you make any kind of mistake, you're out. Or, or uh, what was the name who was killed because of the no-knock warrants? Now, I'm against no-knock warrants. They're set up to, to, to lead to disaster. And particularly, they're set up for drug raids, which I'm against the whole drug trade being illegal. And... Yeah, the police shouldn't have been there. They should have done it. It, it. it was a mess. It was a disaster. But it's a mess and a disaster because of the laws we have. It's a mess and a disaster because these kind of, these kind of uh, uh, no-knock warrants are allowed. Yes, Brianna Taylor. Thank you, Alicia. It's, it's a mess. You know, yeah, we should get rid of the FISA courts. I mean, there's so much about our legal system that has to be changed. There's so much about our legal justice system that has to be changed. And in the meantime, yes, the police get the brunt of this. I find it curious, though. I just thought of this, you know, I'm pissing off the right and the left on this. Why is this a right or left issue? Oh, we've got Peter's here. Peter's here uh, spamming us. Don't donate to me. Don't donate. Donate to the CTO, your local charity. Who the hell is that? Who's CTO? All right, let me block him because this is... This is uh, uh, there we go. Get rid of that. Um, whoops, that didn't work. Corey, I'll try not to block you accidentally. <laughs> That's what happened last time. We got one of these guys in, and I blocked Corey accidentally instead of blocking the, the idiot who was uh, harassing, uh, harassing me. Um, yeah, the, you know, don't worry. The people who don't support me are not, uh, are not actually... Um, who should I block? Don't block him, block him. Not, not Corey. Corey's, Corey's okay. I'm pretty sure Corey's okay. I block Peter. Um, let's see. Yeah, I was going to talk about Pelosi. Anyway, I, I mean, this whole thing about this is about racism. It's not. There's no evidence. I didn't see anything in the trial that suggested that what motivated Chauvin to kill George Floyd was the fact that George Floyd was black. There's no evidence to suggest that if George Floyd was white, Chauvin wouldn't have put his knee to his neck and killed him anyway. And indeed, we've seen police stupidity, police brutality, police uh, disregard, complete disregard for, for human life apply to white people as well. Ah, Brad, you're asking a question that I'll get to when I get to unions. We'll, we'll, we'll link the two issues when I talk about unions. That's good. 
So here's what Nancy Pelosi said today. I, I'm hesitant to even say it because of how insane this is. This is Nancy Pelosi. She had a press conference. So she was prepared. She had prepared remarks, and this is what she came up with. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. Because of you, and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. Nancy Pelosi said that. Thank you for dying for the cause. What cause? Remember, he, he broke the law. He didn't ask to die. I'm sure he preferred not to die. I'm sure his family would prefer he not die. I'm sure Chauvin would prefer he didn't die. Thank you for your sacrifice. Talk about altruism. Because there's a higher cause here. You, you, you brought out... What the 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 the, uh, the, the obvious uh, injustice in our police force, the systemic rate. What what is it exactly that he died for? No, I mean his death is horrible. And and again, it's not so much that I mourn his death as much as I don't want policemen like Chauvin on the beat, because next time he might actually kill a really really good person. George Floyd was not a particularly good person. You shouldn't have killed him either. But the reason you want to get rid of police like Chauvin is because they do harm. I mean, what kind of mind thanks a person for dying? No matter what the cause. I mean, unless the person went into battle in defense of your values, and you, th you know, thank him for fighting for the cause. But, but George Floyd didn't fight for any cause. George Floyd didn't put himself in danger so that Black Lives Matter would arise as an organization to, to, to whatever. Right? George Floyd is not some kind of hero here. He's definitely a victim, but he's not a hero. He's not somebody to celebrate. Certainly not celebrate as a sacrificial hero for a cause. What cause exactly? Now, so it's, it's wow, it's just, yeah, what is she thinking <laughs> What is she thinking? But Nancy Pelosi, she's, she's nuts. She really can't think. Daniel, are you going to do the rest of the money in 299 bits? It's going to be interesting. We're going to be here for a long time. Um, it's, she, she's truly, truly, um, she, she doesn't think before she speaks. And again, this was this she had plenty of time to think about what she was going to say if this was happened. Chauvin did not die for a cause. He died, and a cause was built around his death. A cause that did not match his death, because the cause was eradication of, of systemic racism, supposedly, systemic racism that, that doesn't really exist as systemic racism, the cause of abolishing racism. But Chauvin, but, but it's not clear that he was killed because of racism. So again, I'm, I'm repeating myself. There's no, uh, there's nothing here. So it, it, notice how all of this, uh, Nancy Pelosi and everybody else, this is completely distorted. The whole case is distorted in the name of a political social agenda, which is a social agenda that is... Uh, is anti-freedom, uh, anti the individual, a social agenda that is, is racist in its 
emphasis on viewing everything as race-based and race-motivated and race-inspired. Thank you, Nicholas. And it's, these are politicians. It's, it's truly, truly scary. And, and the, you know, a president intervening or commenting in the way he did, a, a, uh, a congresswoman uh, encouraging um, violence if a verdict doesn't go her way, uh, and, uh, and, a, and then a congresswoman thanking a victim of violence for his victimhood. But this is altruism, right? This is, this is altruism. Altruism is, um, is, is the idea that the whole purpose of life is to sacrifice for greater good. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Gupta. Um, it's the idea that it's good, it's virtuous, it's noble to sacrifice for the greater good. And whether you do that accidentally or purposefully, I guess, is irrelevant to them. So another sad day in American politics, um, uh, you know, probably the right verdict, but also kind of uh, brought a spotlight on the quality and on the, um, on, on just the, 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 the horrific nature, the horrific character of our political class and the fact that politics now is everywhere in everything cannot be escaped, that our judiciary is really at risk of losing its independence. The rule of law, the rule of law is in danger of being suppressed for the sake of political expediency. And that we have to thank both Republicans and Democrats for, right? Don't forget, the uh, Cruz Lee um, Holly bill to penalize the MLB because the MLB made a decision the Republicans don't like. It just goes on and on and on and on. Right? What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes, that should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals. Uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.